My name is Zach uh, Booth Simpson. I uh, have been uh, a video game developer, which is uh, obviously uh, part, of, uh, part of my life coming to this. Um, I'm also an engineer. I've been a software engineer since I was a little kid. And I'm also a molecular biologist. I work at um, the Institute for Cellular and Molecular Biology at um, University of Texas. It's very tempting to say my medium is light, but that's very unsatisfactory. That would apply to a, a painting or a sculpture. Um, it's equally unsatisfying to call it a, a projector or a computer. I don't modify the projector or computer. I just buy these off the shelf and use them. So what am I actually manipulating to create this? What is the equivalent of paint? And the answer to that is algorithms. In a very broad sense, it means um, a set of formal instructions followed to accomplish a task. So that's what I'm really painting with. I paint with algorithms. I sculpt mathematical equations to produce effects. So what all of my artwork has in common is that it's interactive. In an interactive piece, uh, it, in the, it needs to be a dialogue, interact. There has to be two parties. You have to some degree understand your role in it, and it has to respond in a way that makes sense to you. In the creation of these interactive uh, environments, I, I, I have a very difficult problem, which is that the computer is stupid. It can't possibly respond in a meaningful way to everything you could do. As an artist, what I have to do is create a situation in which I can reasonably predict what people are going to do and then create a response to that. So in that sense, my art is a form of coercion because I have to coerce you into some sort of behavior that uh, I can have a meaningful response to. Having seen lots of people use my pieces, um, I had a reasonably accurate prediction of how I thought people would um, interact with it. So I assumed that uh, most people would, because of their natural fear of the unknown, be very uh, hesitant and tentative in their initial steps. And so as they come in, I reward those initial with a small ripple. And some positive feedback you know, indicates like, okay, something's going on here, it's, it's okay to proceed. And I assumed that what people would do from there on was step forward and then I create a, a much more uh, dramatic feedback for that, a kind of reward for that action. As we see life comes up, life comes back down. And then as it fades away, I've kind of taken the reward away. And what I figured people would do is they would take another step, they would see it, and slowly but surely they would build up um, they would build up confidence in it and lose their fear of it. And as I've seen people do with most of my pieces, that means they begin to move quickly and they want the reward more quickly. And so they'll start moving quickly. But it keeps disappearing. <laughs> and so th um, that disappearing, of course, a, a lot of people think the computer has died or crashed, and I, I, I sort of like that. The, uh, the, the, uh, the idea, of course, is that the piece is called moderation, and it's a balance. You have to moderate your requests of this pool. And this is a, obviously a metaphor for many relationships we have with the environment and with our, our friends and our lovers that um, they can't give everything we might want out of them. And we have to learn uh, to t request only what can be given. Or not, right? Often what happens is it goes blank, and most people's response is simply to walk out. <laughs> and so this aspect of it is a, is a kind of message outside of the context of the piece, a message that you, you can only see if you are stand around and willing to watch for a long time. And that message is that those who instinctually, instinctively give up at the first sign of, uh, of overuse or abuse of the system, they, by walking out, they're giving up on the whole interaction. They're, they're dying for want of trying. When in fact, if they would moderate or learn 
the system, what the system can do, what it wants, then they can, ha they can use it forever. It will continue to produce flowers forever if you're willing to take the time to learn about it instead of treating it as some sort of thing to be discarded as soon as it looks like that it's not interesting to you anymore.